Okay, well, finally, you've been wondering, when are we going to actually get to write some code? Well, this is where we do that. If you're following along in the exercise files, you can see that there should be a folder on your desktop called Exercise Files. In that is a folder called Chapter 3. In there is a folder called Example 01. And we're going to look right now at the file called script.html, which is a simple web page. And you should be able to open that up in your editor of choice. I'm using bbedit here. And if you've been following along, you know this is a simple HTML head tag, title tag. It says, hello world in HTML. There's nothing fancy here at all. There's no JavaScript whatsoever. And we can run this in a browser. We switch back to our file, drop it into Firefox, and you see it says, hello world in HTML. So now we're going to add some JavaScript because that's what we've been waiting to do. So we're going to add it into the body section. Scripts can be in a number of different places. If they're in the body section, we'll call them body scripts. If they were put in the head section, they're called header scripts. Header scripts are what you'll use 9 out of 10 times, maybe 99% of the time. But for right now, just as a quick and easy demonstration, we're going to make it a body script. We want... Uh, what we're going to write out to be in an h1 tag again. So we start off by adding another set of h1 tags. And what I do is I tend to begin and end my tags at the same time, even though I'm going to put stuff in between them, because that way I know that they're going to match up. And we always want them to match up. And next we do our script tag. So script tag is just script. And then we add a type attribute. And the type attribute is set to text slash JavaScript. And what that's doing is telling the browser what follows here is lines of code in JavaScript. So that's what you need to do with it. And then as before, you want to end up with another script tag because, again, you want them to match and you want that to be the end of the script area. So all our scripts are going to go inside here. And we're just going to add one line that says document.write that says we want to write something inside our document. Parentheses means that it's a method, as we discussed earlier. Method means you're actually doing something. It's active. It's a verb. What we're doing is writing. What we're writing is whatever's inside the quotes. And so that what we're writing is going to be hello world. But we want to show that this time it's in JavaScript. And then, because we're being good little JavaScripters, we end it with a semicolon. A semicolon is not actually required, but it's good form to do it. It lets the browser know this is really where you want to end the line instead of you're not depending on the browser's default being exactly where hopefully it's where you want it, but with a semicolon, it's definitely going to be where you want it. And then save this because this is your entire first JavaScript. Then go back out and find your file. Drop it into Firefox again. And hey, it says hello world in JavaScript. Congratulations, you have just written your first JavaScript program. We'll go on and improve it in the next exercise. Now we're going to talk about external JavaScript. If you've worked with CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, before, you know how it's handy to use external style sheets because one change can propagate throughout the entire site. External JavaScripts are just the same and useful for the same reason. If you're following along with the exercise files, we are in Chapter 3, Example 2, and we start off by adding a header script tag. Same as before, it's going to be script type equals text slash JavaScript, again, so the browser knows that it is JavaScript that follows this. But we're going to add one more attribute, the source attribute. In this case, it's going to be set to script.js. Script.js is the file where we keep our JavaScript code. 
external JavaScript file should always end with a .js suffix that tells the web server and the browser that it is JavaScript. Then we end our script tag, as always. But if you notice, this time, we didn't put anything between the begin and end script tags. Everything that we want is going to be inside the script.js file. Script.js, by the way, it's in the same folder as our HTML file, so we can just refer to it as script.js. We don't have to give a path. The one other thing we add in this document is another h1 tag, same as before, but with a new attribute, or at least new to us in JavaScript. It's the id attribute. Maybe familiar for those of you who've used cascading style sheets before, what the id is is it gives a unique name to an object on your page. And so this way you can tell JavaScript or CSS how to reference this particular thing. You can't reuse this name. It has to be unique. We're going to call it hello message. And that's all you have to put on this page. Nothing inside it. So then we save that and we switch over to script.js, which is in the same folder. And it's a little bit more complex here than we've done before, but I'll walk through it now. It's really doing two things. We have a first line that says window.onload equals write message. Window.onload, we talked about the onload handler earlier when we talked about event handlers. Onload says when the web page finishes, do this thing. And this thing we want to do is we want to kick off the function called write message. We want to make it happen. Next up, we have our function write message. A function starts with the word function, and then we have the word write message. That's the name of our function, followed by our parens, followed by begin and end braces. Here is the begin, and here's the end brace. In between there is the contents of the function. In this case, it's a single line that says document.getElementById, hello message, dot inner HTML equals hello world. What this means is we take our document, which is our web page, our HTML file, and we get our element by its ID, by its name that we just gave it. That's hello message. That grabs that object, which is the h1 tag. Inner HTML changes the HTML inside that h1 tag and changes it to, in this case, say, hello world. We want to make it a little bit more interesting, so we're going to call it hello world from an external JavaScript. And that way, when we see it on the web page, we'll know that it came from here and not from somewhere else. So let's try and run it. We go back to our file here, which is script.html, and we want to be sure when we try to run it that we're looking at script.html and not script.js. If you load script.js into the browser, what you'll find is you'll just see all the code you've just written. If you want to actually run that code, you have to use the HTML file.